my name is Sylvain Strike and I'm a director, a writer and an actor. When I was very little, uh, one of my first memories is about being on my father's shoulders and I was at a carnival and I looked up and there was somebody crossing a wire with a wire walker and he had a nose on and the nose was red and I thought well that's it I mean how can I be anything else I didn't become a wire walker I did however walk with a red nose and I walk with a red nose still um, so the start of my passion and my love for theatre began very very little little enough for me to sit on my father's shoulders but it also began because I was in the middle of three children and I think I needed a lot more visibility than they did so I made sure they saw me I, once I had decided that this was for me, which was ironically quite a lot later than when I walked that road with my dad, um, I was in about grade 10 when I realised that this was it, it was all or nothing, I was going to head into this. So I went to the Performing Arts High School in Pretoria, Pro Arte, and I did drama as a matric subject and a major, and then I went to the UCT Drama School and later on I specialised at the École Jacques Lecoq in Paris, which is a physical theatre school and a movement analysis school. Why I went into that direction is because I have a complete passion for the physical world that actors inhabit. And I first and foremost trained as an actor. And then when I was an actor for a while, I realised that I would love to tell stories. And in order to tell stories, you can't just be an actor you have to have some control over a creative vision. And I decided to specialize and look at the bigger picture, which to this day is hugely rewarding for me. Directing gives me that and performing reminds me always of the fragility and vulnerability of what an actor needs. Um, so I, I constantly interchange between performance and direction in order to keep that instrument very tuned. I think that what will make a huge difference to parents and the powers that be seeing the arts as something crucial, particularly in this country, is introducing theatre, which is happening but not enough at a very young age, as something that is an essential thing for children to see, for children to grow up with, because it is probably the last thing that requires imagination. Um, the development of imagination is a crucial thing in our lives as human beings. And I believe that it starts early with the transposition of reality in theatres where we are expected to suspend our disbelief and really enter a world. So to come back to why it's essential to listen to children who are needing to go towards this profession is because they have a calling. You don't go into this if you aren't passionate. You don't go into this if you don't feel that you have something to give it and if you don't feel that you can express yourself differently or as well as other artists. Um, you know, becoming an accountant is equally valuable as becoming an artist. And people usually say it the other way around, but it is, it is to be seen on the same level. It is essential. Without artists, we have no mirror to who we are as a society. Um, so when, an, when a child is saying, I want to become a musician or a dancer or a singer, yes, there's a certain amount of period where all children dream of that. When the dream outlasts that shelf life, it's because they're destined for that and they have to be allowed to express themselves and to enter that profession. Whether they succeed at it is another story. They may become an art producer, they may become a, a, a curator for a gallery or a designer of costumes. We need to make our profession as important as any other and I think it starts at a young age when it is exposed as something real and not a dream. Um, if we compare to other countries, and we need to, children have a need for theatre by the time they are adults who can pay for their own theatre tickets because they've had theatre as part of their lives. It's as simple as that. So it's about offering that early for it to become something they need.
Well, it's an interesting question. What, why is it important for somebody, for example, like a doctor, to involve himself in the arts? Or how will arts, right in their career, right through their lives as a child, affect them? My son is 18. He's about to matriculate. He is a gymnast, so he's a very good mover. But he's also a great brain, and he wants to become an orthopedic surgeon. And he's taking fine arts at school and has seen theatre all his life and he has said that his appreciation for the anatomy, uh, how bodies move, have always begun with the arts. Seeing people on stage, seeing actors moving, made him want to become a gymnast, made him want to become something where he tuned his body so much. And having been exposed to theatre through me, he came to go further and go into fine arts, which I exposed him to all his life as much as possible with galleries and museums. So I use that example because he's about to go to medical school. And yet he says that without that, uh, thinking of himself as a surgeon uh, or, or the fascination with anatomy and the drawings of the human body, which happen in art as you learn to do portraits, etc., are all intertwined. We are humans and it's holistic, so it makes no sense that this would not be of any asset to him all his life. So, yeah, for an accountant to know and appreciate music, to get away from the world of numbers, all his life he'll appreciate music. It'll, it'll balance him out. So, to answer your question, it brings balance and it brings roundedness to a human being and that's what we need to be. I think it's very important to make it very clear that we, we are business people. As actors, as directors, as creatives, as technicians, we need to not see ourselves as artists needing to be supported but as an asset. Uh, that we are an essential service to the soul, actually. So I always go back to the fact that um, as a business, I run myself as a brand and I've got to look, very, look after my brand very carefully. Um, I always go back to my performance, my acting, when I need to make money quickly, ironically. And f f for whoever's out there who thinks that it can't be done as an actor, it can. And that doesn't mean sell your soul, it means invest in certain things like a commercial once, twice a year, where you are lucky enough to be cast in a commercial, but where you are making money on the side. Um, I certainly have shot a number of things that I'm proud of, but it's not the product that I would endorse. Um, to keep surviving in order to be a director for a certain amount of time. So it's about learning to balance your sense of, um, uh, what does one say, um, how, how discerning you are is important when you're reading and looking after your artistic career. But you also need to understand that there's a commercial aspect to what we do and to never be ashamed of that and to never be ashamed of asking for the money that you're worthy of and to never think of yourself as dependent on your agent but that your agent is dependent on you. So it's a mindset and one doesn't immediately have it. I've grown into it. I've grown into appreciating myself enough to believe I'm worth it. But if uh, you can start doing that quite young, certainly a lot younger than I did, you'll get further. I'm encouraging all young people to attend theatres, to see art galleries, to realise that without them we're nothing. And I'm sure all of them sitting here and listening to this interview can relate to how art saved them get through COVID. And they're going to say, well, why? We couldn't get to a theatre, we couldn't. Just the little things like listening to music and turning on Netflix. There are artists who've trained in the theatre that are performing on film. And then you go further and you think, well, how can I benefit from seeing art, how, from, from appreciating theatre? You can benefit by, by simply absorbing the lives of others and appreciating the connection that comes with a collective experience of live theatre, music, dance. We are not made to live alone. And I think COVID survived, it told us that we can't survive that way. We are meant to live as a collective. We are the human race. We're not meant to be in silos on our own. So the collective experience that we are deprived of is teaching us how much we need it. Whether it's sitting and watching sports and being with each other, 
sitting and watching theatre and being moved or laughing, laughing like mad, or watching ballet and feeling weightless just for that hour. It is essential and it's essential to our soul to feel that we are connected to an artistic form that elevates us. It elevates us. It makes us rounded and full.